A portion of this video is sponsored by LastPass. A portion of this video is sponsored by LastPass, and this trunk makes a surprisingly good stand-up desk to demonstrate LastPass, which relieves the burden of remembering passwords on countless websites that we use these days. Stop getting locked out of your account and let LastPass fill in your usernames and passwords for you. With LastPass, you don't have to write, remember, or reset passwords. LastPass allows you to keep track of your passwords easily, so you can stay sane. With LastPass, you can put your password on autopilot. LastPass auto fills your credentials on mobile sites and apps for iOS and Android. When you open an app or site, Last LastPass will fill in your username and password for you, making it fast and easy to log in. LastPass offers unlimited password storage, so you can add as many as you want, and you can sync all of your passwords across all of your devices. So check out LastPass, which is linked in the description below. It's really handy. Thanks again, LastPass, for sponsoring a portion of today's video. Now, on to the rest of my video. Recently, I was reading a Forbes article about the insane depreciation of luxury cars that's only getting worse and the writer blamed Tesla for this happening. Apparently, so many luxury car buyers are trading in their cars, their BMWs, Mercedes, everything, for Teslas, because it's 20% of new Tesla buyers, that the writer figured, well, that has to be why these cars are depreciating at such a rapid rate now. He cited the BMW 3 Series, for example, which has an MSRP of $38,000, and three years later, it trades in for only $13,000. That is insane depreciation, but I don't think it's the Tesla effect, as they call it. I don't think Tesla has much or anything to do with it. I think it's more the hoopty effect, and exhibit A of the hoopty effect is this, my 2008 Mercedes 760 Li, my latest purchase that I bought for only $4,500. $4,500. With an original MSRP of over $130,000, this 760 Li was the flagship of the BMW line back in the day. It has a silky smooth V12. The inside is so sumptuous and comfortable. It's a smooth driving car, and it shares a lot of bits, including the V12, with my Rolls-Royce Phantom. Well, that's a very expensive car. New, it's still a very expensive car, but this BMW started expensive, and now, it was only $4,500. I bought it at a dealer auction. It was traded in pretty much dumped, even though it is still a thoroughly modern luxury car. Inside, it's crazy nice inside. Now, admittedly, it is a little dirty, well, a lot dirty, but you can see through the dirt and see how nice this 760 L high is. And the reason why it shares so much with my Rolls Royce Phantom is because BMW owns Rolls Royce. So when they were developing the first Phantom, they borrowed heavily from BMW bits. That's why the keys are so similar. It makes the same bings and bongs. But this BMW is different in the Phantom in a lot of ways. The Phantom is kind of like a grandfather clock, a dinosaur, but this one, technology-wise, is a lot more advanced, and it drives very differently, even though they're both giant luxury sedans. But first, let's go over the cool features, the things that I like. And there is a lot to like with this car, starting with the seats. I love these seats. Notice how the entire seat back is moving right now. That's normal with power seats. But BMW, they go a little bit further. They have a mid-back adjustment that is really nice. Because I like a little bit of a gangster lean in my seats, but I want to sit up still. So that nice back support there. I also have a lot of thigh support because most BMWs have this extending bottom here. The seats are heated and ventilated as well, but there's plenty of other technology in here that is really impressive for 2008, even though you have to fumble through the crappy eye drive to get it. Well, some of them, they have buttons, like the night vision camera. It turns this entire screen into a night vision camera so you can see in the dark. Additionally, you have radar guided cruise control, an active cruise control system. All the technology you'd really want in a modern car, but there's also the little touches. Look at the quality in here with the wood. There's a little inlay in the wood throughout the car. It's just so pretty, so pretty. But since this is the long wheelbase, there's plenty of cool stuff in the back as well. Once again, quite dirty back here, but look at this command center I have back here. I'm basically in a limousine, and the seats are even power-operated. They recline. 
Look at this adjustment. It's, it's crazy. Now, it doesn't have extendable footrest like in my Hyundai Equus, but you can still really lean these back and get super comfortable and then just touch the lovely suede headliner and notice even more of the pretty wood inlays throughout the car. And of course, so the peasants don't see you in your $4,500 car, you can extend the shades. Oh yeah. This is amazing. But driving this car is really where it's at. It's really where I wonder, how is this thing $4,500? But then I also realize why this thing is $4,500. It's, it, it's, it's pretty messed up. Every time I buy a BMW, it never fails. The dashboard is lit up like a Christmas tree. And this 760 Li is no exception. Let's see what's on right now. Check engine, brake light, airbag light, tire pressure. Oh, even the little red car going up on the lift thing. <laughs> Pretty much everything. And you're probably wondering after all that, why, why would I buy another very broken BMW considering I've done it so many times before and it's never ended well. And to be honest, I'm trying to find one that's actually good. And I have a suspicion that the 760 Li is the better car to buy than, than the previous ones I bought. Like the M5, that was a total basket case for many different reasons. The engine could explode for a number of reasons, same with the transmission. And with the 745i, which is a similar car to this, it was a little bit older, it had the uglier front end, but it still had the bangle butt. It had a V8 engine that could also fail at any moment. Those two are obviously terrible cars, but this 760li, maybe not, maybe. So let's start with the bad, other than all the warning lights that are on. It's clear that this V12 with its 420 some odd horses, a good portion of those horses are very, very sick. This engine is misfiring pretty badly at idle, but when you get on it, it still has quite a bit of power. The traction control definitely works, which I need to turn that off. It's probably in the iDrive system. Ugh. I drive. Other bad things, uh, fluid leaks. It is leaking oil. It is leaking coolant. Pretty standard BMW stuff, but enough of it can pile up, especially with all these warning lights, that an owner would just let things stack up, a bunch of deferred maintenance, then trade it in, just completely dump it. And that's why the values on these things totally tank. This BMW was traded into a Toyota dealer, which is kind of a coincidence because my grandma, she used to religiously lease BMW 7 Series starting in the 90s. She was always in a BMW 7 Series. I think she had four of them, would switch every three years, but she quit about mm, like six years ago or so because the lease payments were getting so ridiculously high because the residual values were so low. These cars were depreciating so fast that it just didn't make sense. She switched to leasing Toyota Camry for $300 a month, and that's what she's been doing ever since. In my mind, luxury car owners aren't switching to Tesla. I think they're switching to more generic brands, especially with ones like Kia and Hyundai, how they've come way up in the world when it comes to quality to where there's not much of a difference between this BMW and, and a Camry. Well, other than all the luxury bits and the, the pretty wood and the seats. It is really nice. So normally when I get a hoopty like this, I take it up to my trusted mechanic, the car wizard, like I have so many times, and he goes through and tells me how dumb I am and then how much it's going to cost to fix, and I, and I usually fix it. But in this case, the car wizard was not happy to hear about what I purchased and said something about cutting me off and I've gone too far, which is a little scary. I pull over and give him a call. Wizard? What's going on? What's this about cutting me off? It's a beautiful 760. Tyler, I've I've uh, I've been your friend for a long time, and I've just really gotten tired of seeing you basically cut yourself to pieces on these cars. Oh, but this one's not that bad. Oh, but it's a BMW. It's <laughs> always bad. You just don't like BMWs. <laughs> no, I don't like BMWs. I mean, you've already you've already got a Bentley, a Ferrari. A this BMW, an Alfa, an Alfa Romeo, a Citroen. I bought some of those cars, but not not all of those cars. You're kind of giving away all the cars I'm about to buy. But you, you <laughs> so you're so you're saying you don't want to work on the 760. No, I'm going to have to pass on that. There's only, I mean, I've already got so many projects up here already, and that car it just makes me throw up in my mouth. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> Um, well, I, I guess I'll have to find somebody else. This is going to be a little weird, but I have permission. You're giving me a pass to go cheat on you. 
Absolutely on that one. All right. I, 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 there's one person that comes to mind immediately, so I guess I'll head over to his place. That sounds good to me. If he can have it every time it breaks, it's going to continue <laughs> to break. All right, wizard. Well, well, keep on keeping on. Okay, I'll see what I'll do then. All right, bye. Johnny? Tyler? This, it's weird. I don't have a name for you yet. Finally. Um... How about Car Ninja? He did make that little contraption. If you all remember Johnny, he was the one who saved me with the M5. He, he took the clothes hanger and took it around a bunch of different ways to pull out the, uh, yeah. what, what was it? What was the part? The uh, pickup signal for the uh, crankshaft. I was out of limp mode and he, he fixed my M5. The wizard did the bulk of the work, but Johnny saved me from having to pull the transmission out again to figure out what the heck is going on. So the wizard, uh, he doesn't really like BMWs and he was kind of mad that I bought this. and. You've built your whole business, German Motor Works, on BMWs. You, yep. you go where the money is, obviously. These things break a lot. Yep. Have they ever built a good BMW, honestly? Is it, it just... Not that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> See, job security. And, and he's honest, an honest mechanic. But I don't think I made a mistake with this one. I think, I think it's okay. Yep. It only has the check engine light, uh, the airbag light, the brake warning light, uh, tire pressure. It's leaking oil and it's leaking coolant. So just that. Not bad. Okay, coolant leaks. I'm a little worried about this because I have the same V12 in my Phantom and I've had to do that valley of death where the whole intake has to come off and everything. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, I hope not. This uh, breather hose is here underneath the intake. If you look right there. So I something you can reach without taking a bunch of stuff off? Yes, real easy, real easy fix. Well, we're off to a good start there. Look in here, you have your upper timing cover gaskets leaking. It's a BMW, it's going to leak forever till the end of time. Exactly. Valve covers will leak, everything yep. leaks on these things. And the uh, main one looks like your uh, vacuum pump. The vacuum pump leaks oil? Yep. Huh. Look at this handy dandy steering wheel mount here. Very nice. You need, huh? Moment of truth. Oh, only, only 25, 30. 31, 32. <laughs> A lot of codes, no surprise there. We're digging into the engine now, and... Misfire number one. Yeah? And a uh, oxygen sensor. Well, that could be worse. What was the one with the 14 faults, though, right beneath it? Uh, <laughs> let's look. Basically, this car has two engines. So the other engine has 19 codes. I see. So, so it's two six-cylinders put together. There's two computers yes, running it. Exactly, yeah. Basically, you got misfiring all the cylinders. Oh, that's, that's not good. Then there's my airbag light as well, the brake light, <laughs> the everything light. If only there was an everything light on BMWs, that'd be a lot easier, just, just, just everything. Airbag light is? Under voltage. Oh, just low battery? Yeah. So basically, we just need to charge the battery and clear the code. Perfect. And then there's oil leaks, and for that, we'll have to Lift it up. Put it up on the lift. Yep. Not too bad underneath. I'm seeing immediately pretty good drip coming from somewhere, huh? Uh, the vacuum pump and your upper timing cover gasket. Neither of those oil leaks sound yeah. cheap to fix, but otherwise, looking pretty solid here. Suspensions. Pretty solid, except your front brakes, they're completely shot. If you look here, you have a good score inside. Oh, great. Oh, hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's moments from catastrophe. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So. Wow, so is that bad alignment there? Yes, sir. And I noticed that these are snow tires, which is probably this. very inappropriate. All right, so we have a few leaks, a lot of codes to fix. I'm curious how Johnny's gonna be with this. The car ninja, uh, the wizard, would be having a field day right now. Yeah. But uh, I guess we can go into your office and figure it all up. Yep. Will this be the first non-crappy BMW that I've bought? Is the curse finally broken? All right, Johnny, how's it going? Well, I got your estimate ready. You, wait, were you on a website looking at something? This is something the car wizard does too. He's wow. buying a... Wait, that's the St. Jude, the charity hospital? Yep. You're going to donate? Yep. <laughs> we'll do it. 
<laughs> Make my wife happy too. <laughs> so instead of looking at sun seekers in Malibu mansions and high end watches, Johnny's looking at who to donate to, and yeah. I give him my money after this estimate. So let's see, what do you got? Okay, we got the uh, front brakes. Yeah. The rotors at 308, uh, pads at 130, and labor at 133. Oh, so less than 600 bucks for brakes. That's not bad, but. The next part looks pretty expensive. Yeah, your oil leak. Uh, labor, a little bit over $1,000. Wow. Yeah, 16-hour uh, labor. It's because, what, everything has to come off to get to these valve cover gaskets? I mean, BMWs make valve cover gaskets that leak every single one from the beginning to the end of time, so why do they make it hard to do? If they're going to make them leak, why not make them at least easy to fix? Yeah, so. But, what, the intake has to come off? Yes, sir. Yeah. Really? Look at all these seals and things just to get to these valve cover gaskets. Yep. So I'm looking at what, like almost two grand, and we're not done yet. Man, we have spark plugs. Yeah. We have the coolant leak, which is pretty cheap, seventy-five right. dollars, and you have the alignment and two tires in the back. All right. So that makes it a grand total of two thousand eight hundred and eighty dollars and sixteen cents, and that's if it's just plugs. So what if I need a coil or two? Uh, they are fairly cheap. They're okay. like $60 a piece. Okay, yeah. so under three grand, most likely all in, which yeah. isn't bad considering what I'm starting with. It's a $130,000 car brand new, and I'll be, oh, seven grand into it when I'm done. That's, that's not bad. It's not bad at all. I guess I'll let the car ninja do his thing, and the car wizard can be happy that he's not working yeah. on BMWs. Thank you for watching.